dear students welcome to this edition of um, histology videos these are a series of e learning videos posted on youtube today's class is on the histology of the lung part 3 we've already finished part 1 and part 2 where part 1 was general introduction to lung histology part 2 was the bronchi and the bronchioles and now the part 3 which we will cover is the respiratory portion of the lung so recap of what we have discussed earlier there are two components in the tracheobronchial tree the initial part is the conducting part and the subsequent part is the respiratory part in the respiratory part conduction of air also takes place now uh, the point to note is the key difference between these two parts is uh, gas exchange is unique to the respiratory part something that's missing in the conducting part therefore up to the previous video we have covered the terminal bronchiole that's the line of demarcation beyond the terminal bronchiole is the respiratory bronchiole from here the epithelium becomes flat enough to enable a respiration to take place this is one second out pouchings are visible in the respiratory bronchiole itself uh, that uh, adds to the um res i mean uh, the the uh, exchange of uh, gases now with this background let's go into the uh, details of this portion respiratory portion of the lung now recalling this uh, photograph um of the bronchovascular bundle you can see marked in blue i repeat marked in the color blue very particularly blue is the pulmonary artery or rather one of the branches of the pulmonary artery and marked in red is the pulmonary vein next as you trace it down up to the alveolar level it ends in the vascular plexus i repeat the pulmonary artery ends in a vascular plexus which is uh, located in the alveolar septa in that is in the little connective tissue between uh, the alveoli uh, the capillary plexus is located that vascular plexus keep in mind is important for the uh, blood air barrier discussion next we have the smooth muscle uh, which is very unique in the tracheobronchial tree because it's not exactly circular rather it is more of a spiral now this spiral orientation of the smooth muscle fibers in the bronchiole and uh, the lower down is very particularly important because this contraction enables the uh, lung not only to uh, one expand but when it contracts these muscles not only reduce the lumen but also help in pushing the air towards the uh, trachea next this is a very uh, very interesting slide this is obviously not an hematoxylin and eosin stain it is uh, a stain where the elastic tissue has been uh, particularly stained based on previous video discussions we can easily identify the bronchiole i have put a label there but what is more interesting is just next to the bronchiole is one of the branches i would say the long, one of the larger branches of the pulmonary artery let's see that now that's the larger branch of the pulmonary artery and very unusually you can see this artery uh, normally in most of the arteries we see a very prominent um, internal elastic lamina but here is an artery where you can see not only internal elastic lamina see this is a blow up of the same photograph you can not only see the internal elastic lamina but interestingly this is a beautifully seen external elastic lamina therefore this is one of the very important signature features of the uh, pulmonary 
uh, artery and its uh, bigger branches next this uh, photograph begins the discussion on the respiratory portion of the lung i have put a dotted line a red white dotted line with a blue haze around it now that roughly demarcates the terminal bronchiole from the respiratory bronchiole i have labeled the terminal bronchiole uh, watch the epithelium is still thick therefore there is no respiration possible here in contrast then uh, epithelium becomes very very thin squamous in nature single and squamous and that's the respiratory bronchiole you can see one terminal bronchiole is dividing into one two uh, respiratory bronchioles in this photograph now when you trace the respiratory bronchiole downwards it leads to uh, a long tubular uh, area the alveolar duct uh, now the point I, you i need to mention as a contrast between conducting and uh, um, the respiratory portions of the lung histology is the conducting portion up to the what we call as the end point namely the terminal bronchiole the conducting portion has a clear wall whereas the respiratory portion you cannot define a wall because the wall itself is a component of the uh, respiratory uh, gas interchange area in other words the wall is so thin you cannot really say whether this is a wall or this is a component of the overall lung parenchyma so thin is it that respiratory gaseous exchange is uh, feasible you can see very clearly all through the respiratory bronchiole and the areas further below there are out pouchings and these out pouchings are the areas which lead into the alveoli uh, to enable uh, gas exchange now that's the alveolar duct coming out of a, a respiratory bronchiole now you see the duct leads to an alveolar uh, uh, sac or a, a dilated chamber called the alveolar sac once again alveolar sac same point uh, respiratory uh, gas exchange can take place now this sac i repeat this sac has lot of uh, incomplete partitions these partitions are the interalveolar septa and because of these part Uh, we call those little little chambers as alveoli i repeat they are called the alveoli these alveoli are formed because of this uh, um, interalveolar septa now that's the interalveolar septa now those interalveolar septa are very very important uh, end components of this uh, tracheobronchial tree because they bound the ultimate respiratory uh, blobs i would say where the gas exchange takes place effortlessly next now you see compare it with the photograph i gave you you will get more or less uh, a good correlation between what exactly is seen histologically and how we could represent it diagrammatically next um let's examine the first part of the uh, respiratory units namely the respiratory bronchiole in clear detail for which i have just labeled one step preceding it namely the terminal bronchiole there is a flashing double headed arrow which is a signature point you should remember for the respiratory bronchiole remember uh, i have already reemphasized that gas exchange is possible in the respiratory bronchiole because it is thin second it also has alveolar outpouchings now that point, that double headed arrow is one example of how an outpouching uh, into the alveolar sac uh, is uh, demonstrated another point you will notice is in between uh, those points where there is outpouching you can see some very large eosinophilic uh, um, areas now let's examine those a little in uh, detail that's the respiratory bronchiole now you see the epithelium is changed to simple squamous 
it's a discontinuous epithelium that's the point i'm trying to emphasize and then see those those small small blobs i told you which are projecting into the lumen we will examine them in detail they are in between the alveolar outpouchings and this design is consistent with respiration now you see these pouches not only lined by a thin epithelium but deep to it in the core of these blobs are located smooth muscle fibers are located the smooth muscle fibers this is a very very important signature feature of a respiratory bronchiole now let's go to the next stage uh, it is always better to understand normal histology in the background of uh, in a, a pathological uh, design in a condition called emphysema for whatever reason the alveolar septa begin to become less and less it, it, it is removed for some pathological reason as the alveolar septa gets uh, uh, knocked off it is at the cost of oxygenation of the lung you see it is at the cost of oxygenation because this is where gas exchange takes place and if that yeah, contrivance namely the blood air barrier is slowly knocked off the overall functional efficiency of the lung is lost you see the difference i have put a circle white red dashed circle you see the number of alveolar septa intraalveolar septa here is highly diminished as a result empty space which is the dead space because this area doesn't really contribute to oxygenation is noteworthy in contrast i have also put a normal lung so that you will know how much should be an average uh, alveolar density to be called a normal lung and how contrastingly in an emphysematous lung the uh, septa are largely missing that's a very interesting pathology worth noting next you see let's review the alveoli the alveo atrium or the alveolar sac now with that background we move from the respiratory bronchiole to the next stage namely the alveolar duct and the alveolar sac you see those are the alveolar sacs the end uh, of the alveolar duct expands into a balloon like uh, space called the alveolar sac now you see not only the sac you can see that half partitions projecting those are the intraalveolar septa as a result whenever you see an alveolar sac you, you can be uh, very sure that the walls will have these cubicles which we call as alveoli that's why i have said this is a photograph of alveolar sacs with surrounding alveoli now these are the terminal air spaces of the respiratory tree where the actual um, gas exchange takes place that means oxygen is taken into the capillary um, blood and carbon dioxide is released now you see we move into another terminology remember we discussed a little bit in the previous video when we said one terminal bronchiole and all the area it supplies but now here you see a respiratory bronchiolar unit is a single respiratory bronchiole and all the alveoli that it supplies this is called the respiratory bronchiolar unit now as we go down the uh, tracheobronchial tree uh, you can see one important major change is the thickness of the wall becomes it becomes little and smaller and smaller ultimately it is so thin that it is just um, the alveolar uh, epithelium or the pneumocytes lining it immediately adjacent to the capillary now you can see the interalveolar septum i have put it in high power now the lining is two things pneumocytes and its adjacent uh, epithelium pneumocytes have a basement membrane the capillary endothelium also has a basement membrane most often both the basement membranes are 
fuse that means so much is the uh, requirement of uh, um, space that even the base membranes are uh, plastered to each other that reduces the thickness of the uh, epithelium here so that gas exchange is uh, maximally enabled now you see there also we have thick portions and thin portion well i could identify one area which very very classically is a thin portion of the lung i have shown it in uh, the uh, square and the rectangle uh, highlights the degree of attenuation of the pneumocytes and the capillary endothelium as already mentioned is uh, to be particularly noted in this uh, photograph now the pulmonary vascular bed which is embedded between the uh, pneumocytes of two sides that vascular bed filters virtually filters the incoming blood from the right ventricle that is the blood that reaches the lung through the pulmonary artery ultimately is filled into this bed and it's completely filtered and then uh, the rest of it goes into the uh, pulmonary vein now you see the mucosa is so thin here and not only thin it is it is immediately uh, in uh, touch with the inhaled air uh, and whatever antigens that are being brought along through the inhale, inhale, inhaled air that's a very important point because of that because of that remember in in the pharyngeal tonsils we have discussed a similar concept here because of this close interface between the inhaled air and the mucosa thin mucosa appropriate immune mechanisms are built in along the conducting and the respiratory regions by this we mean you know, the the complete immune setup like macrophages will be available local cells which can identify the antigenic characteristics etc etc now you see again let's go back to the intraalveolar septum i put it in oil immersion let's see uh, at least a little bit more in it now you see there are two types of cells in this interface this is not hnd this is malloreason there are two types of cells lining the alveolar uh, one is a flat cell one is a flat cell called pneumocyte type 1 i have pointed it out here the second one is not flat it is particularly identified by its signature feature because it it projects like a small bulb head bulbous projection into the lumen that is called the type 2 cell the third type of cell in the immediate vicinity is uh, the cell belonging to the uh, capillary namely the capillary endothelium now these three are very very important must identify features in a uh, alveolus high power now maybe another hedge malaria is on another area i have shown you can see slightly this is a bigger blob you can see how close uh, is the interface between the capillary endothelium and the pneumocyte yet another area i have shown the pneumocyte type 1 and the capillary to the limb are virtually close to each other that it appears as if there is only one single basement membrane it cannot be resolved as two individual components this is what i want you to know and of course i little away i have shown a pneumocyte type 2 this is important because whenever we talk about uh, the secretion here namely the surfactant uh, the origin of this uh, um uh, material chemical is from this uh, pneumocyte type 2 also remember this pneumocytes type uh, pneumocyte type 2 uh, may even help in uh, repair process where certain uh, type 1 cells are being lost this cell will divide and replace or convert into flat pneumocyte type 1 cell now you see is a beautiful very very high magnification oil immersion uh, of the same slide uh, malaria zone to further highlight the blood air barrier you can see one side the capillary endothelium pointed out as a label in the upper part and in the lower part you can see the pneumocyte type 1 yet another 
I, I have given multiple areas so as to reinforce the point to say how thin is this alveolar sub interalveolar septum here is a large long running capillary running across the uh, field vertically and on either side you can see well lining the uh, endothelium is the uh, lining the capillary is the endothelium and immediately adjacent to it is the pneumocyte type 1 so much so that the two cells are virtually plastered to each other and very rarely as i showed you in a previous slide you may see the conjoint uh, um, base membranes the fused base membranes of these two cells this you need oil immersion and a good contrast for this particular uh, demo next uh, again i told you this is the respiratory portion of the lung therefore to enable respiration one thing needs to be available 24 by 7 365 days is that thin epithelium should remain uh, in in good maintenance all the time second there should not be any additional extra secretions except what is physiologically required like for example surfactant secretion will be there small amount of little secretion may be there but it may not be pathological however however considering how thin the interalveolar septum is i showed you so many demos the purpose of showing at least five or six areas uh, separately uh, and uh, in, in different location is to again reinforce it is so thin so thin that the chances of damage to this epithelium uh, the incidences are very many for whatever reason it may be because of some toxin or it may be because of any infection or it may even be because of a over distension you know sometimes when you put the patient on a ventilator you know the the amount of air may not be properly the air pressure may not be properly regulated i mean there can be any number of reasons etiological factors whatever it is the possibility of damage to this epithelium rather epithelium endothelium junction is very very high the result of that is a damage to this uh, epithelial wall where uh, we can we can say the disruption of the alveolar septal barrier takes place end result of this uh, disruption is a local inflammatory reaction fluid and exudates accumulate in the inter in the alveolar spaces and the interstitium now this is not a good thing because maximal efficiency is assured for gas exchange in the physiological state any accumulation of fluid blood whatever is at the cost of uh, the uh, oxygenation so progressive hypoxia is the end result of this uh, damage if not treated in time this can lead to fibrosis that can further add to lower functional efficiency of the lung this condition is known as acute respiratory uh, distress syndrome i repeat acute respiratory distress syndrome I mentioned it. inflammatory response and fibrosis is the end result next there is one more condition we will we will just add on to our, to improve our understanding for certain genetic problems genetic reasons reasons where the um, gene changes are there or some mutation has taken place the quality of the mucus that is produced is altered i remember along the tracheobronchial tree there is some local mucus serum mucus secretions particularly we have seen in the larger bronchi now the point i need to make is the mucus becomes because of this genetic variation the mucus becomes a little more viscous remember change in the viscosity is okay as long as the mu the ciliary current is able to with push it into the trachea and thrown out as a normal physiological cough but the ciliary apparatus is unable to handle this increased viscosity of the mucus secretion as a result 
mucus plugs thick mucus plugs begin to accumulate in the tracheobronchial tree the problem is because these cannot be thrown out they they accumulate there they will one reduce the functional efficiency of the lung hypoxemia is a major possibility second this gives the area this area becomes prone for repeated infection this condition is called cystic fibrosis other than the lung there may be other organs uh, that could also be involved um, in the same disease process like for example the pancreas the condition is also known as mucoviscidosis viscidosis means higher viscosity now this is another interesting point to understand in contrast so that a pathology of this kind brings out how important the normal physiological design of the lung is uh, for uh, normal breathing very thick mucus impaired mucociliary rejection current and those of you who want more detailed this particular gene is mutated now that was an overview of the respiratory portion of the lung uh, if you have any doubts you can uh, pen your feedback and queries to this email id of mine uh, incidentally this is the narration version of uh, the histology of the lung i also have a non narrative that means uh, a musical version the background instead of narration has a light music behind it uh, so this is also available you can see it. the link to that is given in the description box below both the versions are available originally the version 1 was a musical version which i did for experimental purposes now i am adding the audio narration now this is uh, the overall summary of the respiratory portion of the lung histology next video will be the cell um, different types of cell cell types uh, in the tracheobronchial tree that will be video number 4 which will follow this uh, video uh, so my dear students and uh, faculty friends if you have liked this video uh, i would invite you to subscribe uh, to my channel and uh, also uh, the bell button may be pressed in case you would like to have periodic uh, updates of uh, additional information being added on the uh, channel thank you and wish you all the very best